ですね、えー、アップルのローランサーソネッティのですね、えー、The Future of Ruby in Mac OS 10というセッションです。Are you ready?、Uh, just a sec. <笑> OK。OK。Can everybody hear me?OK.Let's、okay. start. Yes, uh, konnichiwa. <笑>、uh, I'm glad to be here today. And my name is、uh, Laurent Sansonetti. I work for Apple in the core operating system team. And one of my jobs is to,、uh, to support Ruby in macOS 10. So, and today I'm going to talk about the future of Ruby in macOS 10. And this is the agenda for today's session. And this session is divided in three points. The first one we will see. Uh, the present. We will, we will see、uh, how Ruby is supported in macOS 10 today. Then we will see the future, what Apple plans for Ruby in macOS 10 for the future. And finally, we will have some time for questions. And let's just check out what AppNet since today. Ruby is part of macOS 10 since 10.2. It's, I think, four or five years ago. So it means that. Since 10.2, Ruby is distributed by default on macOS 10. And it means that you can write Ruby scripts and you can expect them to work more or less uh, uh, until today.、Uh, until today, 10.5,、uh, macOS 10 developed.、Uh, we ship the latest version and there is, of, of course, new stuff. And very soon there will be、um, a software update called 10.5.4. That fixes some regressions and also some security bugs. And, but let's, let's just check out what's new in, on Leopard. So, first of all, there is a better Ruby distribution. Ruby is now distributed as a framework. It means that everything is part of a bundle, a Cocoa bundle, including the header files, the standard library, the regams, everything, the Ruby interpreter, so that if you want to Write an application that uses the Ruby runtime, you just have to link to this, to this framework. It's very convenient. And also, we ship Ruby games and many, many games, including Ruby on Rails and things like that. And there is also some Dtrace support in the, in the interpreter. So you can use Dtrace to get、uh, the list of methods that are called and things like that garbage collection statistics.、So、it's very nice to, to, to debug a living application. And of course, the biggest point is that、uh, Mac OS 10 development is in Ruby is now officially supported. So, since Leopard, you can write applications in Ruby, and Apple、uh, will support them across OS releases. So, this is very important. And if you, if you look at the Mac OS 10 development stack, you will see that there are four layers. And The first one is Darwin. Darwin is the very low level base of macOS 10. It includes the kernel, but also libsystem, which is、uh, the C library, plus a few other utilities like LaunchD, ASL, SunFile. And this is, a, this is the core of the system, and it's all written in C. Then there is the graphics and media layer, which contains、uh, everything that the application framework layer uses, like OpenGL, CoreImage. And this is written in C and Objective C. And the application frameworks layer contains all the libraries that you want to use to start a Mac OS 10 application. It includes, for example, Cocoa. And this layer is mostly written in Objective C. And finally, the user experience layer contains、uh, libraries that you want to use in your application to improve the user experience, like、uh, Spotlight or Quick Look. And this layer is written in C and Objective C. But the idea here is that you have four different layers. And two languages, C and Objective C. And in Leopard, we provide support for all these four layers in Ruby,、uh, so that you can actually use any of these four layers in Ruby using Leopard. And to do this, we use Ruby Cocoa. Ruby Cocoa is distributed in Leopard by default in the standard installation. And Ruby Cocoa is a Ruby to Objective C bridge. So, it means that it's a library that bridges both、uh, Objective C runtime and Ruby runtime. And it's not Cocoa specific. So, you can use Ruby Cocoa to access 
uh, other uh, Objective-C frameworks, like Core Animation, for example. And it's not only for Objective-C. You can use RubyCoco to access pure C APIs. For example, you can use RubyCoco to do OpenGL programming and to access, for example, functions or function pointers, constants, things like that. So RubyCoco is not a young project. It was created in 2001 by uh, Fujimoto Izakuni. And it's, uh, it's open source. It's licensed under the, under the LGPL and the Ruby license. And I'm now the official maintainer of RubyCoco. And the status is stable. It's very stable. We didn't find any important bugs since, I think, many, many months. So. And 0.13.2 is the latest version available. And RubyCoco is at the moment used by both free and commercial projects. Uh, there are many, many use cases where you would like to use RubyCoco. The first one is to prototype an application. Ruby is a very nice language to, to write and to learn also, and it's, it's very fast to write Ruby code. So uh, RubyCoco is, is, you can use RubyCoco to prototype some stuff in some Coco stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's better than Objective-C because Ruby is interpreted, so it allows you to to get the list of all methods for a given class or things like that. And it allows you to, to, to uh, prototype or to develop chunks of your applications in pure Ruby. And also it's great for application debugging because since Ruby is interpreted, you can at runtime have access to all objects of your application and see all the methods and things like that. And it's also cool for application development. You can actually write uh, a full application in Ruby Coco. And it's cool because if you, if you realize, most of the hard work is done in frameworks. Uh, the, the costly operations are written in C or Objective-C or C++, and Ruby is just the, a glue that allows you to write some uh, business logic or things like that. But the hard work is really written in native languages. This is a, a web block editor. It's a commercial application. It's all written in Ruby Coco. It's very nice. And these guys managed to, to sell it, so people buy it and they are happy with it. And more importantly, there is line chat. And if you look at the screens there, the translation screens, it's actually line chat, but the Windows version is very popular in Japan, I hear. And this is the Mac version. And the Mac version is written using Ruby Coco. And I would like to invite Satoshi-san here. And Fujimoto-san. Yeah. Where is Fujimoto? Ah, there we go. And I would like to invite them to talk a bit about Ruby Coco and Lime Chat. Fujimoto. Ruby Coco is what it is. 簡単にお話しますと、えっとですね。あの、2001年ぐらいにMacOS10っていうのがAppleから出たんですけれども、その頃にえっと、なんて言ったらいいかな。えっと、僕はちょうどその、ちょうど仕事ちょっと仕事が
まあ、それを、まあ、その IRC あ IRB で、えーえー、なんだろう。そのココア、MacOS10 のココアの、えー、オブジェクト C のオブジェクトにアクセスしたいなというので、あの拡張ライブラリを、えー、そうですね、えー、NS オブジェクトというのはあのココアの、えー、一番こうルートにあるあのクラスなんですけれども、それを,それを、まあ、Ruby からこう叩くようなライブラリ、あライブラリなんだろうな、拡張ライブラリを最初に作り始めました。でそ,れをそれを作っていろいろ叩いているうちに、じゃあ今度はウィンドウを開けるようにしようとかいろいろこうやっていたんですけれどもそうですねであのえー、まあそれでえー、だもともと Ruby c o c o a っていうのは今あのなんていうこうアプリ MacOS10 のアプリケーションつあの次に MacRuby っていうのも出るんで出るあ,のあるんですけれどもあのなんていうかもう要するに MacOS 専用のアプリケーションをもう普通にあのオブジェクティブ C で書くのと同じように作れるものを作ろうっていう気はあまりなかったもともとなかったんですけれども結果なんかいろいろいじってたら成り行きでできてしまったっていうのがルビアココアという、まあ、そういうような経緯で作りましたあとはもう昔から、えー、とそうですね MacOS 専が出る前のこれもう20年ぐらいまあ、要はマックバカっていうか、まあ、あのマカーマカーとよく言われているような<笑>そういうあれで昔からマック使っててだから古いマック OS の頃から、まあ、ルビールビーも気に入っててでル、えー、古いマック OS そうですねマック OS 10以前の古いマックでルビー作ったりとか、まあ、そんなこともやっていたんですけどちょっと話がまとまりがなくなってしまいましたはい久さんありがとうございましたはいえー、と僕はですねあのライムチャットを作ったあの中川なんですけども、えーとですね、ローランからあのなんでライムチャットをあのルビー効果で作ろうと思ったのっていうふうなあのことを聞かれてですねそれをちょっとあの答えようかなと思うんですけどあのアプリケーションを例えばまあ Windows とかあの Mac で作るときにやっぱりあのアプリケーションが安定して動かないと困るんでだからブリッジのソリューションとか何かを何かでラップしたようなソリューションっていうのはできるだけあの使いたくなくてネイ,ティ、まあ、ネイティブにですね例えば Windows だったら C++ プラプラで、まあ、Mac だったら Objective-C で作りたいなっていうふうに僕は思ってたんですけどだけどあのこの RubyCocoa だけはあのすごい特別で。あのなんていうんですかね、オブジェクティブ C ってもともとスモールトークからかなり影響を受けててあの、まあ、ダックタイピングだししかも、まあ、あの Ruby みたいにですねあのオープンクラスで好きな、まあ、ように自分があのクラスを、まあ、変えられると既存のクラスを変えられるというふうなあの特徴があってですね、まあ、すごいあの Ruby とですね Ruby もまあスモールトークから影響を受けているところがあるんですごいまあ近いわけですよでそのまあ2つのこう世界を混ぜ合わせた時に、まあ、1つの世界にこうした時にすごいなんかあのなんていうんですかね、全然違うものを混ぜ合わせようと思うとすごい苦労するんですけど Ruby と Objective-C っていうのはすごい似てるんでだから混ぜた時にですね全然なんか困ったことがほとんど起きなくてだから、まあ、アプリケーションをです、ね、作ろうと思った時にすごい安定したアプリケーションを、まあ、あの Ruby を使ってですねすごい楽に実装することができるというふうなことが分かったんで、まあ、あのライムチャットを作る時にですね Mac 版のライムチャットを作る時に Ruby 効果を作っあの使ったというのが、まあ、その理由ですね。だから、まあ、あのすごくですね、Ruby コーがよくできたあのフレームワークなんで、ぜひ皆さんもですね、何かアプリケーションを作ろうと思ったら、オブジェクティブ C でですね、書く理由っていうのはですね、もうほとんどなくてですね、Ruby コーとか、あと、まあ、あのローランから後で紹介されるですね、MacRuby っていうのを使えばいいと思います。はい、以上です。さあ次。OK。So let's do a demo. And for this demo, I will just show you the integration of Ruby Coco with the Apple development tools. So we will, we will create a very、uh, simple project. So I, you need to use Xcode to create Ruby Coco applications. So you start by creating a new project. And I will create a Ruby Cocoa application here, Cocoa Ruby application. I will call it my application. And then it's done. The project is generated, and if you build and run, oh, 
you'll see that there is a window, but it's quite empty. So let's, let, let's add some user interface elements to it. So I open the nip file here. A nip file contains the description of the user interface. And it opens interface builder. So let's just put this here. And it's my window. So let's add some widgets to it. And first of all, let's add a button. Oh. And then some text field. And you can work. Let's do this. So we, we would like to write an application that you write an expression here, you click the button, and it will just show the result of the expression. And the expression will be evaluated in Ruby. So we just finished this. We can save the nip. And now we need to write the code for this. So if we go back to Xcode, we can run the application, but it doesn't do anything. So we will start by adding a new file to the project. And we can, if we go there, we can create different kinds of Ruby files. And I will create a NS object subclass. I will call it my controller. There we go. And I want to have pointers to both text fields. So, and you do this by using IB outlet. An outlet is a pointer to a user, user interface element. So. Mm -hmm. And then you want to create the action that will be used when you click on the button. And I can use clicked. And now I want, I want to set the result field. I want to evaluate the string here. So I can just this. And I want to set the string value of this. I have to, there we go. We can save, but the code is written, but it's not connected to the user interface. So we need to go back to interface builder and I need to instantiate my controller. So I can just here check an NS object. I can drag and drop it. I can open the inspector here. And here I can select the class of my inspector and you can see the interface builder knows exactly the code I wrote in Xcode. So both applications are connected and interface builder has full Ruby support. And you can see that my click action and my, my outlet. And now I can just connect them. Oops. This is the eval field. It's the result field and it's the click action. I can save. Now I can run my application. And it works. <laughs> and I do. It works. So as you can see, it's, it's very easy to start a project. And we just added one line of Ruby here. But of course, in the real Ruby code application, you will write more code. And, and that's all for, uh, for Ruby code demo. So how, how, Ruby, how is Ruby code working exactly? So Ruby code is a bridge between Ruby and Objective-C. So let's say that you want to create a button and then set the title of the button. On the left, you have the Ruby code. On the right, you have the Objective-C code. You can see that both are similar, but let's just check out how, how it's going to work. Uh, first of all, there is an NS button. NS button is an Objective-C class. It's defined in Coco. It's written in Objective-C. So the, the very first time you want to access NS button in Ruby, Ruby Coco is going to create a proxy class for it. 
because NS button itself cannot be used in Ruby directly since, since it's an Objective-C class. So Ruby Coco has to create a proxy class that has a reference to the Objective-C class so that if you send new to the proxy, Ruby Coco will forward the new message to the Objective-C class. And this will create an instance of NS button. But this, this new instance cannot be used in Ruby directly because it's an Objective-C object, and Ruby objects are very different. So, guess what? Ruby Coco will create a proxy. A proxy that contains a reference to the Objective-C instance, so that when you want to send a title, Ruby Coco will do two things. First, it will convert the Ruby string to an Objective-C string, an NS string, and then it will forward the message. So it, it's all about proxy and forwarding messages. Yeah, Ruby Coco does works exactly. It does exactly four different things. It creates proxies so that you can uh, talk between one runtime to the other runtime and vice versa. Uh, it forwards messages between Ruby Objective C and Objective C Ruby. And since Ruby objects, oh, there is a typo here. Uh, since Ruby objects are not Objective C objects and Objective C objects are not Ruby objects, they have to be converted. A Ruby string is, is not the same thing as an Objective-C string. And finally, if an exception is raised in, in Ruby, it has to be converted to an Objective-C exception and vice versa. So what's the problem with Ruby Coco exactly? It's actually this. It's, uh, it's because Ruby Coco is a bridge, so it has to do this. And it's a bit problematic. And there are four different types of problems with Ruby Coco. Uh, the first one is the first one are bridging related problems. The second one are more related to the syntax. The third one are related to threading. And finally, there is a little memory problem with Ruby Coco. And I will just give a quick overview of all the problems. Let's talk about the bridging problem first. Uh, since uh, Ruby Coco is a bridge between two different runtimes, uh, every time you create an object or a class in Ruby, you have to also maintain the same thing in, in Objective-C. And vice versa, when an Objective-C class is created, you, you need to create the same thing in Ruby. So everything has to be maintained in both sides. And it's very painful. Uh, objects and exceptions have to be converted when they cross the bridge. It's critical because it's not the same type. And also, you don't want to create a proxy every time you cross the bridge for the same object. So you need to cache, you need to, to have a cache to, that keeps references to the proxy and the real object. And it's very problematic because caches have to be invalidated. And sometimes we don't know when an object is collected by the garbage collector or of both Ruby or Objective-C. So the result of this is that there is a memory overhead because of the proxy creation and the dispatch is also a bit slow because everything has to be converted. Uh, regarding the syntax, Objective-C has a very special syntax compared to Ruby. Uh, the idea of Objective-C is that every argument can have a name or a key and arguments are part of the method name, the method signature. If you look at the third line, you will see uh, do something with and and this is actually going to call the do something with uh, semicolon and semicolon method. But in Ruby, Ruby uses a, like, uh, a C-like function call or Java, and we don't have key arguments or name arguments or whatever. So we need to find a way to bridge the, the Objective-C uh, syntax in Ruby. And we do this very simply. We, re we replace a semicolon with underscore so that you can write do something with underscore and underscore and then the two parameters. And you, you can omit the final underscore if you want. It's prettier, I think. And the point here is that even the underscore syntax is not very Ruby friendly. It's a bit ugly. And for this example, it's not very ugly, but uh, Coco is a very verbose API. And sometimes you have a method with like 10 arguments. And so in Ruby Coco, it looks like a very, very long method. So it's not very friendly. 
So there are, there are problems with threads in Ruby Coco, mostly uh, because of Ruby 1.8. Uh, so since Ruby 1.8 is not thread safe, it is not possible to use Objective-C APIs that uses threads and, that, and then APIs that are calling you in different threads. So Ruby Coco has a hack. It detects calls that are from different threads and it routes the calls in the main thread. But it's, it's low and it doesn't use the threading system and it can cause deadlocks. And also, since Ruby threads are not native threads in 1.8 but emulated, there is a problem because Objective-C stores some very critical data per thread, like exception handlers or auto-release pools. And if you use threads, Ruby threads, and then call Ruby Coco code inside it, it can crash your application very easily. So we try to fix this in Ruby Coco by patching the Ruby interpreter and adding, hook, adding hooks to the, to the Ruby interpreter so that every time a thread, uh, a thread is switches in or switches out, we appropriately release save and release the critical data. But it doesn't work all the time and it can crash your application really. So threading in Ruby Coco is, is not very fast, it's slow, and it's, it's also unstable. And finally, there is a little problem with the Ruby GC because in 1.8 or even in 1.9, the Ruby GC um, runs in the main, the main thread so that when, when it collects memory, it stops the main thread. And if you have an application that creates many, many, many objects, it can uh, stop the run loop. And you will see what we call the pizza of the death appearing in your application. And also, since it's not very easy to integrate Ruby in an application that uses the new Objective-C garbage collector, because we need to find a way to integrate both garbage collectors in the same process. So we didn't do that. And here comes MacRuby. MacRuby is supposed to fix all these problems. MacRuby is Ruby on top of the Objective-C command runtime. MacRuby uses the Objective-C runtime for the class model of all objects. And it also uses the Objective-C garbage collector instead of the Ruby garbage collector. It has key name uh, method argument syntax. So you can call or define Objective-C like methods. It, it implements the 1.9 language implement, uh, specification well. And so it supports, for example, uh, multi-byte strings or things like that. It's, uh, it's free software and it's, it was created uh, this year by, by Apple. And, and this is the, the main goal of MacRuby. The main goal is to enable the creation of full-fledged Mac OS X applications which do not sacrifice performance in order to enjoy the benefits of using Ruby. That's the main goal. We want people to write uh, critical applications in Ruby, very critical applications. And we don't want to have all the problems Ruby Coco has regarding the performance. So it's really about performance. And secondary, we would like to write an, uh, an implementation of Ruby that runs well on, on the Mac, that runs fast as well. And MacRuby is Ruby on top of Objective-C. So all Ruby classes depend on the NSObject class. NSObject is the root class of, of Objective-C. And all Ruby classes are Objective-C classes. All Ruby objects are Objective-C objects. And all Ruby methods are Objective-C methods. So we really use the Objective-C runtime for the core of the implementation. The Ruby built-in types like string, array, and hash have been re-implemented completely using uh, Coco, using Core Foundation, exactly. So that actually, when you create all strings, for example, in MacRuby, are CF strings or NS strings. We don't use the old implementation anymore. And MacRuby uses the Objective-C garbage collector. It doesn't use the 1.8 or 1.9 garbage collector anymore. Uh, this new collector is very interesting because it's a generational collector that, that does collections in a separate thread. And since it's generational, it, it can collect objects very quickly. Let's have a look at the new syntax to call Objective-C methods. 
and MacRuby introduces a new syntax. So, and firstly, you have the, the Objective-C code that you have to use to create an uh, window. And after that, you have the same code using MacRuby. And you can see that it's quite very similar. It's very easy to read, it's easy to write, and you can imagine the same call in Ruby Coco. So you would have to call init with content read underscore style mice underscore baking underscore defer, then open parentheses and pass all the arguments. So you can see that it's, it's much more nicer. And you can use the same syntax to define methods as well. Uh, firstly, we, you have the Objective C code to define a table view delegate. And after that, you have the MacRuby code. And you can see that it's very similar to the Objective C code. And after that, the, the method that will be created is actually a real Objective C method with the right selector. If you look at the performance between MacRuby and Ruby Coco, it's, uh, it's quite amazing because uh, it's not a bridge anymore. It's a native implementation on top of Objective C. So let's, let's create a dummy object and then call a method on it. And you will see that it's extremely fast in Ruby Coco and it's like uh, 10 times slower in using Ruby Coco. Uh, Ruby Coco. It's faster in MacRuby. And a method that accepts a parameter, for example, a string, is extremely fast in MacRuby because a string don't have, doesn't have to be converted. And on the other side, in Ruby Coco, every time you cross a bridge, the string has to be converted. So it's extremely slow. This is the slide that I used to describe how Ruby Coco uh, works. And let's have a look at how MacRuby works. And this is the same code on the left and the same code on the right, of course. You still have the NS button class, but since Objective-C classes are actually, uh, no, since all Ruby classes are, are actually Objective-C classes, uh, NS button is just yet another class in the runtime. So MacRuby can use it directly. There is no need to create a proxy. So we just send new to the NS button. This will create a new instance of the NS button. And since our MacRuby objects are Objective-C objects, MacRuby can deal with another Objective-C object, even if it's not an object created in Ruby. So we can just get a, you can just pass these objects to MacRuby and directly set the title. And you don't have to convert the click me string from Ruby to Objective-C because here it's already an Objective-C string. So it's extremely fast. And I would like to show you a demo. Um, um, ah. Okay. Mac IRB is uh, IRB uh, running on top of MacRuby. It's the same source. We didn't modify anything. And if I create a string, it works. And if you look at the class of the string, you will see that it's an SCF string. It's not the string anymore. And Here we can see that the inheritance uh, model changed a little bit from Ruby to MacRuby. Uh, NS object is the root class of all Ruby objects. And this is an array. If I look at the class, it's a CF array. And all strings have a given encoding. So here, uh, CF string is using a SE compatible encoding for this specific string. It's using a Mac OS Roman encoding. But I have a file here with some bytes. And if I ask for the encoding of this data, you will see that it recognizes the encoding and it uses ETF 16 instead. And I can print it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And now we can do stuff like regular expression on the string. Oops. <laughs> ah, no. So we need to. Uh, let me. Kara or Kana? Kara? Anna. Anna. Oops. Uh, so it doesn't show very well, but. <laughs> The idea is that uh, oops, I need to put it. You see? So uh, since all strings in Ruby are uh, in Mac Ruby are actually um, CF strings. And CF string is written on top of ICU. So we have ICU transformations for free in all Ruby strings. You can transform from Latin to Hiragana, to Hiragana to Kanji. Uh, you have many, many different kinds of, tra of transformation available. And we support encoding. And if you look at the list of all encoding, there are many, many encodings. Actually, we have more encodings in MacRuby than in Ruby 1.9. And I think that's all for this demo. Uh, I know, I, wa I want to show you something different. Uh, no. It's a very simple application that retrieves images from Flickr and show them in a Cocoa image view. And it's, it's written in MacRuby using everything in Objective-C. And it's a nice application because it, is, it uses threading. And it, this is something you cannot do in, uh, in Ruby Cocoa. And I can, for example, change it. OK. Oh. I can whoop. Hey, hey, it works. There we go. So I can I will show you the code. It's the main class. And as you can see, well the it's only 80 lines of code. So it's it's not very uh, it's not very hard. <clears throat> and so we there is this our chronic method. We have an outlet to the browser view. And we connect to a notification center. And the cool thing here is that for every image in the view, we create uh, an object, an RSS photo object. And we just pass this object to, the, to, to Objective-C. And MacRuby doesn't care if, if it's an NS object based class or not, because all objects in MacRuby are Objective-C objects. We can just pass it, and it's going to work, because an RSS photo here is a pure Objective-C object. And it's the, here is the implementation of the RSS photo class. And you can see that it's pretty simple. And it's much more funny to write this in Ruby than in Objective-C. <coughs> and I will go back to the presentation. And uh, the state of MacRuby, uh, the current release is 0 0.2. And so we finished to integrate the Objective-C runtime and garbage collector. It works uh, well now. And we also finished to re-implement the built-in types using Core Foundation. And we have Xcode support with samples. And it's extremely experimental for the moment. At least it doesn't uh, segmentation for it anymore. But, and we, we can pass sample test, not RB, 
we passed most of the bootstrap tests of Ruby 1.9 and some of the Ruby uh, tests, not all, unfortunately. And we can run uh, RB, IRB, RE, and RDoC. And the next version is going to be 0.3. And we want to provide a Ruby Cocoa compatible layer so that if you have a Ruby Cocoa application and want to try MacRuby, you would just have to require a file in your application. And then it is going to use MacRuby instead. And it will provide you hints so that you can port a Ruby, application, a Ruby Cocoa application to a MacRuby application. We will also provide something called hotcoco.rb. Hotcoco.rb uh, will be a Ruby-ish layer on top of Cocoa. As you can see, Cocoa is a very verbose language. And well, I'm going to talk about hot cocoa just after. And we want to pass all tests. And we want to support Ruby games and Ruby on Rails. Uh, we want to provide the trace, of course. And we need to do lots of performance work. And we want this release to be the first production release of MacRuby. And we want to release it at the end of this year. Perhaps for RubyConf, I don't know. And let's talk a little bit about hot cocoa. There are, there are some problems with Cocoa APIs. Uh, they are very, very verbose, very long method names, and Cocoa doesn't really use the Ruby semantics. For example, there is no API that uses blocks or exceptions. And we want to develop hot Cocoa because Cocoa is not hot enough. And hot Cocoa will be a Ruby layer on top of Cocoa. It will be written in pure Ruby. It will be just a layer on top of Cocoa so that we don't want to subclass the Cocoa classes. It's just based on the Cocoa classes. And we want, it, we want it to be able to write both simple and very complex applications. And the project started last night, actually. <laughs> And it started last night, and Rich Kilmer here uh, implemented the first version. And here is the typical hello world that you have to write. In, so it's a MacRuby code. To, to have this window, you have to write this. And it's not very, uh, it's not hello world anymore. You have to require a framework, you have to create an application, you have to create a window, you have to set the title, you have to create a button, you have to add the button to the content view of the window. You have to set many settings to the button because by default it doesn't give you an aqua button. You have to center the button at the center of the window. You have to create a controller. You have to connect the controller to the button. Then you need to display the window and you need to run your application. It's, uh, it's not very easy. And with Hot Cocoa, you can write this. It's better. And yeah, I don't, I don't need to explain, I think. And I would like to invite Rich Kilmer to do some hot cocoa demonstrations. And just uh, remember that it was created last night, so. <laughs> Ah, we need a micro. Oh, we have another one. You have it? No, you yes. can. Let's use this. You must do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think he's, he's going to use the. Do you need uh, electricity? There we go. Oh. Um, perfect. Yeah. Hello. All right. So what we're going to show is uh, these demos running. As we said, uh, I started this last night. I did not do test-driven development, <laughs> just to let everyone know. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is run test one here. 
So test one is sort of what Laurent showed Thank you. before. I'm going to create a window with a frame, set its title, create a button with a title. I'm going to then add the button to the window, and then when an action happens on the button, I'm going to put ouch. So let's run this. There's our button in our window, and I click me, and it ouches. <laughs> so that's the first demo. Kind of neat. It's a little bit more complex here. I'm going to get a list of sounds from, that are in the library. Uh, I'm going to create a, a button, but here what I'm going to do in the action is I'm going to actually create a sound object with the file, the random sound that we got from above here. I'm going to play the sound. And I'm just going to create another pop-up. Uh, this is an NS button pop-up button. And uh, just set the frame and set items to be an array. So let's go ahead and do number two. Sounds. <laughs> and uh, of course, you can select the, uh, the pop-up as well. And uh, for the last demo, we're going to do the awesome web browser in five lines of code. We can make that one line of code, but we wouldn't be able to read it. So let's go ahead and uh, bring up a web browser. And uh, oh, look. <laughs> now one of the things we wanted to do with this is to make this very easy not only to uh, enter this code, but to understand what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, as Laurent said, it's kind of verbose of an API, the Cocoa API. So the way you actually adapt something like a sound, an NS sound, is you just create what we call a mapping. So I want to map an NS sound to a sound. The defaults by reference are true. Normally when you create a sound, you have to say sound, NS sound dot alloc dot init with contents of file, pass a file, um, by reference colon true or false. So here it defaults by reference to true. Uh, it init's with the contents of file, options, delete, file. So all it does is pull the file off the options you pass in. And of course it defaults that. So that is what um, here created the sound method. It's available to me because I've included hot cocoa. So what's nice is these aren't globally set. As you just include this in a class, then you would have all these methods available, window, sound, and all of the other mappings that we did. Um, and it also maps constant. So if I said bezel rounded, it actually translates that into NS rounded bezel style. So you don't have to type those big things. But you can look in this file to see exactly what constants are defined. And uh, wrapping WebKit was that. That was it. And here I actually have custom methods like URL equals um, and auto size. And it defaults to auto size true. That's why it resized automatically when you um, increase the size of the window. So yeah, that's it. Excellent. Perfect. And this is Hot Coco. And after MacRuby 03, so maybe next year, uh, we would like to make MacRuby a real alternative to AppleScript. And to do this, we need to do um, two things. First, we need to implement the Open Scripting Architecture API so that MacRuby will be a real uh, OSA language in the system, you would be able to choose between AppleScript or Ruby. For example, in mail, you will be able to write a rule in Ruby instead of using AppleScript. And we want to provide an Apple event API as well. And we want to provide to, to work on the performance even more. And we would like to use LLVM to improve some of the performance. And also, we, we want to use LLVM to generate code at runtime. And currently, we are, I'm using, we are using a libffi to generate closures, but we have some problems with it. And LLVM is, is, a, is a great tool in this. It's a big project, but and many people seem to like it. And if, I, I heard that Ruby News is actually working on using it. It's very exciting. Very, very exciting. And uh, this is the conclusion. 
So the, the, the thing to, to, remember, to remember here is that Apple supports and encourages macOS 10 development using Ruby. So please write applications in Ruby. And if, for production, uh, you, you, you must use Ruby Coco because it's stable and it's not going to crash. And if, please also try MacRuby if you can and report it back. And so if you want to have more information on Ruby Coco, you can go to rubycoco.sourceforge.net and for MacRuby, macruby.org. Very easy. Any questions? So let's ask one more question. Do you have any plan to support Mac Ruby in, on iPhone? <laughs> mm. I'm very sorry, I cannot answer this question. <laughs> but, but I can give you some technical stuff. Uh, MacRuby is not going to run on the iPhone because uh, it uses the Objective-C garbage collector and it's not present on the, on, on the phone yet. So I, I just say let, let's wait a little bit. <laughs> All right, thanks. Hi, Objective-C garbage collector is not available. ちょっと難しいという話ですね。えっと、え、MacOS10のえに、MacRuby が乗るのはいつ頃を目標とされているかっていうのと、その時、Ruby、Cocoa、は消えてしまうのかっていうことをお伺いしたいです。あ、ウ
はい、あじゃあ次の方。I'm Moto and sorry for my、uh, same question again. But,、uh, how many lines of code did you write、uh, for Hot Ruby? How many? Li lines, lines of code.、Uh, Rich wrote Hot Cocoa, so I can tell you.、Uh, how many lines of code I wrote? To、uh, hot Ruby. To for, code, for Hot Cocoa? 20. 20? 320 lines. 329. Oh, thanks. Eh, Ruby, a Mac Ruby, a Mitetara, a Array Grass, a Ochikai, or Sarateri, or Nandalo. So, you are no Kanzeni, Ruby, no Jis, Aretaba, Array Grass, no Jis, or State, Objective C, Object C, Plus Plus, no, eh, Janaya, eh, Cocoa, no, Areka. 持ってきてそれにえっ、ー、とメソッドを追加してるのかとかその辺のえっ、ー、と置き換えをどういうふうにやってるかっていう話を聞きたいです。He he said how he wonder how you implemented Ruby strings for RS hashes. Uh, with uh, object C classes,、uh, he, he、uh, wonders、uh, hmm? all Ruby methods、yeah. uh, be implemented by you. You want to see? Yeah. Okay.、Uh, I can show you the code if you want. <laughs> And, yeah, so the idea is that.、Uh, whoops. Hi. Ah, ah. Yeah, that's better. And so your question is how did I implement the strings using、uh, Cocoa strings or things like that? So the idea is that.、Uh, this is string.c.、Mm -hmm. And.This is where we allocate strings, and this is my code, and this is the Ruby code. So here I just create a mutable string, s and then I, I return it. And you see that CF string create mutable returns you an Objective C object, but I just cast it as a value. It works. And then I, I, I use a garbage collection function to make the, the string. That can be collected by the garbage collector. And all these methods, well, not C symbol, but all these methods have been re implemented.、Uh, it's very long. For example, a、uh, strip,、uh, yeah, strip bang, and then it's my implementation of strip. It works well, it, it's faster than one night. <clears throat> Especially when it comes to multi byte strings. Multi byte strings are really faster in MacRuby than、uh, Ruby 1.9. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> えーっとですね、LLVM の導入をするということだったんですけど、えー、そのあの LLVM の実装したらその、えー、CRuby に対してバックポートなどをする予定はありますかまたは可能ですかということが聞きたいです、はい、英語の方がいいでしょうか、まあ、多分人は知らないですけど。It's like an experimentation. I, I will experiment things using 1.9. And for example, I know that Matt is interested in the kid argument stuff we, we did. And maybe it will,、uh, it will, it will serve as for Ruby 2.0 in the future. 
And anything I implement in, in, in uh, 1.9, yes, I would like to, to, to provide patches or things like that. And MacRuby is our open source, so it's very easy to find the changes and backport them. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, it will be good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> はい。他に何かございました。はい。えっと、プロジェクトブルコーツの伊藤です。Thank you very much. Your presentation very good and uh, MacRuby is very nice. So, uh, I have three questions. Uh, so how many members uh, develop uh, MacRuby in Apple? How many members developing uh, MacRuby? MacRuby in Apple. Uh, how many man man powers? Member Manpower, uh, it's, it's only me and Ooh. I. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, so and, and it's, mm -hmm. uh, I don't work on, on it uh, full time. Uh, and, but uh, in the future, I, we will have more uh, people on the project very soon. Right now, it's just an experimentation, but it, it works very well. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, okay. so, um, so, how different? Uh, uh, so, uh, I want to know uh, memory size. So, uh, Mac, uh, Co Ruby Cocoa, uh, from Ruby Cocoa to uh, Mac, Mac Ruby. Ruby. So, the, the differences? Uh, so, uh, there, are, there are a few things that you want to change. Uh, the, the method caching is different. Mm -hmm. You have to change the syntax where you call Objective-C methods to use the new syntax. So, uh, and there are other. <laughs> is it what you wanted to say? Or? Ah, is there a difference in memory <laughs> usage? Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is, uh, there is a difference. How about uh, memory consumption uh, yeah. between two? Yeah, so uh, there is a difference bec because uh, MacRuby doesn't create proxies and it has a different garbage collector. So there is definitely a difference. We didn't benchmark yet. We didn't do any, any benchmarking yet, but yes, we, we, there is definitely a difference. Thank you. So, and, uh, uh, so. Mm. You said the uh, uh, Apple script is uh, replaced with Mac Ruby. Uh, no, 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 I never so say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see your uh, No, no, I say that, that we want Mac Ruby to mm -hmm. be a true replacement for Apple script. But I didn't say we want to replace uh, Apple script. <laughs> but yes, we, we would like Mac Ruby to be used as a real alternative to Apple script mm -hmm. so that MacRuby will be as as upper, as upper script a real an OSA language. At, at the moment in Mac OS X, there is only one OSA language. It's upper script, and we want a second language, MacRuby. So a real uh, alternative, and yeah, th that's what we want. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, so mm. yeah. About this, so... Substitutable. Uh, yeah, that's a good translation. <laughs> <laughs> so, this way. So, does Mr. Sarsawaya uh, know this issue? Mr. Sarsawaya, what do you know about this issue? What? そもそもサルソゴイアンを知らないえっとサルソゴイアンっていうのはアップルでアップルスクリプトのアーキテクトですあいやオフコースいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやい
あのこの後あの運営上のですねお話が各谷さんからあるそうなんですがその前にあのローランにあの拍手をお願いします。